What's the most ridiculous policy your employer ever enacted or tried to enact? Best Buy had a walk past the customer, like you're doing something else, then turn back and ask them an unrelated question before trying to help policy thing. Walked up on two fellow employees acting it out and asked if they were practicing picking up girls. Shortly after this, they turned it into just asking them a stupid question like hey customer, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Or have you ever ridden a donkey? I'm not exaggerating. My GM asked customers if they have ridden a fucking donkey. You should have seen their faces. My boss wanted photos of us working to put on our social media pages. Only problem was we are photographers, so on every shoot we went on we now had to take two people so one could shoot photos of the other shooting photos. It all stopped when I turned in a photo of my colleague editing a photo of me taking a photo of him. When I worked at Forever 21, we had to show our manager our bag slash purses slash pocket CTC when we left to go get food, go to the bathroom, or at the end of our shift. This was supposedly to keep theft down. At the time I worked there, I'd been having pretty severe reactions to perfume, so my doctor gave me a special epipen to carry around in case I got sick. I had it in my bag, along with a book and some other junk I brought to work. One day I was showing my bag to my manager before my lunch break and she saw the epipen. She asked what it was. I told her it was for allergies. She reached into my bag, took my epipen, and told me that no needles or drugs were allowed to be used by employees during work hours, as per regulations, outlined in the employee code I signed at hire. I was completely dumbfounded, and in my days asked you do know what an epipen is, right? She tells me that she doesn't care, I can't be shooting up in the bathroom on my break. She kept saying it was in the rules, blah blah blah. I talked to mall security, they came and had a screaming match with her. The next day we all had to sign a new employee contract that redacted the previous drug policy and the rule about showing her our purse. I have a buddy who worked for a very large asphalt paving company, his division had approximately 300 employees. Each employee was terminated a week before Christmas and rehired after the new year. They were all forced to take a two week vacation and never gain benefits because not one worked a full year. It's support and we were bringing a new company onto our network, had to replace all their computers, provide on site training, etc. The brand new project manager ordered 100 orange vests, like the ones you see workers on the side of the road wearing, only these had the words I can help in big bold black letters. Get a memo from him saying that it's mandatory that everyone on the site wear them. We meet with him and basically say they are ugly and we will look ridiculous wearing them, it will make us look like a bunch of morons. He decided that he was right and we were wrong and went right up to the president of our company and demanded that he reprimand us. President decides to give us a visit to see what is up. The project manager is with him and we pull out the neon orange and green vests. The president turns around and says they are hideous. I won't allow any of my employees to wear those vests. The project manager lasted one week and was replaced by another one of our team. The company time clock started rounding to the nearest 15 minute, unannounced. Only it wasn't nearest, it was next 15 minute in the morning and previous 15 minute in the evenings. If you arrived at 7.46 it put you down for arriving 8am. If you left at 17.14 then it put you down for 1700 hours. When folks noticed it, they confronted the boss and were told it was to average out the time to get sweeted up and down at the beginning and end of the shift. We pointed out that suit up time is payable. Then the next day it had quit rounding, unannounced. The 5 second rule. I was a cook at a greasy spoon diner, and if I dropped the meat on the floor, I'd toss it in the trash like any sanitary person would. The boss saw me do that with a sausage patty one morning, and reamed me out for it. He claimed since we mopped the floor every morning and the patty had only been on the linoleum for a few seconds, and I was cooking out all the bacteria anyways, it was perfectly safe and a waste of his money to toss it in the trash. <laughs> Having to set up their cube with their monitor in the back completely visible, and you're back to the opening slash aisle. But the overlord who brought forth this great plan had extreme objections to the idea that people with an office, like her, have to set up the same way work in a pretty small time cafe, pretty much a family business aside from me, and the chef and my buddy, and my boss goes on holiday to get married. 
First day after the person in charge, her sister plus dating my buddy, gathers everyone and says, if we are not 10 minutes early we don't get a break throughout our shift. Never stuck. Seems like an attempt to show power. A bunch of positions were consolidated. I was one of the few that got to keep my job plus take on the responsibilities of a few others. As a favor the boss switched us all from hourly to salaried workers and told us we would get paid for 40 hours of work, no matter how much or how little we worked, so long as we came into the office every day. A bullshit way of denying us overtime pay. Pretty much everyone in the same boat as me just stopped working on Fridays at noon. Within 6 months, we all found other jobs elsewhere. Worked at a discount clothing store, and my managers all demanded a coworker who was 8 months pregnant cover the fitting room. On her feet. With no place to sit or any water, because no drinks allowed on the sales floor, guys. There was definitely more than enough associates there who cold've also done it, and offered to, but nope, it had been too long, since she'd done a fitting room shift, might get rusty at standing in one place, and saying have a nice day to people, I guess, policy. She was too afraid to comment back at them, because they'd threatened to terminate her after the pregnancy before, but she'd been having a couple health concerns, and was more concerned about baby, so she wanted the money more. It was tough to watch. Me and a coworker ended up forcing her into a seat anyway, and as we were telling her that we'd take the blame for it and tell them we forced her to sit, a customer walked by and overheard us. This woman was apparently a mother of four, and when we kind of evasively but honestly answered what was going on, she stormed up to managers and told them they were crooked and slimy for doing that to a scared young pregnant girl. Was pretty awesome to see them all embarrassed like that in front of other customers, and pregnant Kawaka ended up getting a chair, and after baby was born healthy managed to get a much nicer job somewhere else. So happy ending. Not nearly as horrifying, but we also had a very very strictly enforced policy, where we had to always comment slash say something positive about the customer's purchase. Every time. Even if it was just an old woman buying a pair of plain socks or someone buying lingerie, I was expected to start up some kind of conversation specific to the item of clothing. Managers would come up behind you sometimes and silently observe for like 10 to 20 minutes to see if we were doing it. I got written up a couple times because I absolutely refused to start up stupid conversations if someone was just buying like a pair of panties or something. People already have enough anxiety about checking out. One needs the person ringing them up to start making dumbass comments about how cute the bows on their panties are or whatever and certainly not in front of other customers. <laughs> Worked for a website. Corporate installed new web filters. Didn't want us wasting time on the internet while at work. They actually blocked our own website. Granted, it was a huge company that owned many many properties and we were a very small part of it. But still, there were a couple of days where we literally couldn't get anything done because we couldn't access our own website. Not really a policy, but when I was in high school I worked at the shitty local movie theater. Sometimes when the dumpster was full they would get us to jump on it to try and compress the garbage. It was kinda fun, so we usually went along with it. One day seemingly randomly I decided nah I don't feel like it. So I told the like assistant manager working that day that it was too dangerous and I refused to do it. He got pissed off and wrote me up. The next shift I worked the head manager told me if he had been around he would have sent me home on the spot. So then I decided to call Ministry of Labor. And the next day the head manager told me I would have never have asked you to jump on the garbage and I don't think anyone was ever asked to do it again. Well at least until I was fired maybe a year later for being late for a shift. I used to work for a popular UK Italian, Aish, chain restaurant. Six months into working there our manager went on some corporate conference and came back with this idea that all waiting staff should abandon notebooks. Apparently, writing down someone's order stopped personal interaction with customers who responded better to people committing their order to memory. Okay. The near trick they came up with to remember orders was to parrot everything the customer said back to them, word for word. Not only that, but it was felt that standing by a seated table made it seem that the staff were superior to the customers, so instead we had to squat next to tables. Literally, squat down to our level. I tired it once, and the couple I was serving looked so alarmed 
that I refuse to do it again. I had one where women had to wear hose unless their legs were tan. This one isn't horrible, and I understand the reasoning, but even my doctor thought it was dumb. Only 50% of your sick time can be unscheduled, i.e. calling in and saying you can't make it because you have food poisoning. This means that I had a co-worker that had over 700 hours of sick time accrued because she was lucky enough to never get cancer or something where you know in advance that you will be at the doctor all day. Had a boss tell everyone that if the cash deposit for that day went missing he would take the money out of our paychecks, even if we weren't there or if it wasn't our fault. It was a bad system to begin with. He also said he would dock our paychecks if things weren't cleaned to his specifications. I told the managers they couldn't dock our pay for those things as they were illegal. Luckily they never did, but the management slash owner was ridiculous in other ways, I, e. Telling me I wasn't worth a raise, manager, and top salesperson making $11 an hour, telling me I would never get any smarter, and that I shouldn't go back to school. I'm getting my masters in science education next year and this week finishing my realtor's license. That guy was a jerk. Worked as a design consultant with a company that had a very strict time schedule. You had to be there at 7.30am or 8am, take an hour lunch at 12, and leave at the 9 hour mark, 8 hour plus 1 hour lunch. I realize this sounds petty, to gripe about what is effectively a regular work schedule, however we were an office environment, that didn't talk to customers and only had to meet a deadline for projects. There was just no need for this sort of strict assembly line type of schedule. Their late arrival penalty was the worst too. If you showed up at 7.35, because traffic was just that little bit heavier than normal, congratulations, your new start time was 8am. And if you showed up at 7.20, while they didn't directly expect the free 10 minutes, they very heavily encouraged the free time. Everywhere else I have worked in my 10 plus YR career has been far more relaxed, be there during core hours, 6 hour window from like 8 to 3, do your 8 hours of work, leave when you're done. There was just no need for that strict of a schedule there. 9.30 am hours announced by group email that the company would be reducing their contributions to existing employee pensions. 9.45 am hours announced by group email that they didn't mean what they'd written in the previous email and the reduced pension contributions would only apply to future employees. The second ML may have been prompted by a polite ML back pointing out the statutory regulations surrounding pension contributions in the UK. I worked in mental health facility. There was manager that tried to make people voluntarily give up their lunch hour to bring their lunch from home and sit in the break room and listen to him lecture about counseling practices. I was the only employee who refused and I told upper management that I would go two hours if they tried to force me. Of course I had a target on my back from that point on, but I already had my exit plan ready anyway. Soon after I left, the manager was fired because he did some other things that people complained to both ours and the legal department about. 